Woof woof! Hey everyone, thank you for checking out this video. It's me, Marcus, aka The Mad Dog, and we're doing another discussion video, and I thought this would be a little bit of a fun one, a little bit of an interesting one to do, but of course there's a link between comics and video games. And by that, I mean that most of them are quite terrible. But when you look at stuff like Injustice, the Batman Arkham series, when you look at that weird Wolverine game that came out, a lot of the Spider-Man games and the X-Men games of the 90s, there is a lot of untapped potential within the comic book realm that hasn't actually translated to the video game universe yet. This one's just for fun, it's my own personal list and I'm not even sure that most of these are in order but these are my top 10 comics that I want to get turned into a video game. Coming in at number 10 we've got Black Widow and I wanted this to be some kind of amalgamation between like Splinter Cell, Hitman and Metal Gear Solid 5. So what I mean by that is Black Widow is all about espionage and sleuthing a way through and over the course of the game there could be three or four major open world levels. Similar to Metal Gear Solid 5 when you dropped off on the outside and you've got to like look around and see what everything is and find your way in. At this point so the example that I had would be that it's some kind of fancy banquet, you could have Black Widow actually infiltrate her way in, you know, maybe she could get disguises, she could use holograms and stuff like that, use all those kind of techniques so that she could quietly get her way in to the back scenes where that's where all the information that she needs actually would be. And at this point where it kind of turn into a Splinter Cell style game. So the enemies are ones that you can't knock out, you actually have to find a way to work your way around it. You can use distractions, you can use gadgets and it'd be a lot similar as well to the stealth predator section of Batman Arkham Asylum and Night and City. Because of course I've played those games and I played Spider-Man on PS4 and whilst I was playing both of them I thought how great it would be if Black Widow could actually have her own game where this is the main mechanic. The Predator rooms in the Batman Arkham games were my favourite parts of them and I'd love to see a game take full advantage of that and do it more. But if you did this for Black Widow I think it would definitely be a recipe that would work. Number 9 we've got Superman Batman. There has been a lot of discussion about will he ever do another Superman game and has it got any potential to be good? Because the problem with Superman is either that he's got too much power to the point where there wouldn't be any challenge or the fact that you have to nerf him so you're not really playing as Superman. The best way to counteract this would be to include Batman in it. We've already got a character that we know works as a video game and you could pretty much just copy and paste the Batman out of the Arkham games and put him into this one. So it'd very much be level based but there'd be times where the two characters come together. So you could have Superman flying about, you could have him being overpowered and not having to nerf him but then you've got the more grounded and realistic bits of the Batman gameplay that would take place on the ground. It could be somewhat open world and you could have the choice between switching between the two similar to in GTA 5, but have it be even more complex than that to the point where there's certain things that only Batman will be able to do and other things that only Superman can do. But the way to get around this is to still highlight Superman's strengths, but highlight another character's strengths as well to sort of give you the impression that Superman does actually need Batman. And going back to having stealth combat, because that's one of the favourite types of play that I like, you could have it so that Superman can do like the detective mode stuff because he's got his x-ray vision, you know, maybe he could free something from a different or just heat base something and then Batman can go through as well like I don't know those are just some of the ideas I've got off the top of my head but I do think this would be a solid idea I hope it's something that someone's got in the works and it satisfy a lot of that need for another Batman game and another Superman game and give us something completely different as well. Eighthly I've got Saga. Now I haven't finished reading all of Saga I read it in single issues up to about issue 15 and that's when like the first deluxe edition came out but I really enjoyed the world and I think I want this more just from like an artistic standpoint because they wouldn't be able to do Saga in a standard video game type style they'd have to honour the kind of style that's been implemented by Fiona Staples. I hope I'm saying her name right I apologise if I'm not. But I was watching the PS5 press release the other day and although I was largely disappointed because there wasn't much that I actually wanted, I did think that there was one game that whilst I was watching it I was going, is this a saga game? And it was the one about that stray cat and the world's just full of robots and then just one cat. Which I'm not going to lie, I 100% accused my girlfriend of making that game. But it's only recently that Saga made it on the list and that that's the reason why, because I saw that game and I realised that there would be so much potential for it. You could do it in a similar way to No Man's Sky, but actually have it so that there's something to do within the game. You know, have it so that there's so many open planets and you can travel between them. Have it that you're constantly being hunted by mercenaries. And I do kind of think that if this did actually get a video game, it'd be more point and click style in a similar way to like the Telltale games. Which isn't bad, it just isn't what my vision for this game would be. But I think there's very few people that would actually be able to argue with me that this would make a great game. Number 7, we've got Sin City. I read the paperbacks years ago and I forgot just how rich this world was. Again, this could be really interesting from a style perspective as well. Could you imagine if they could really match that comic almost like 2D style, but with the black and white and with the occasional like spot of red? And it'd lend itself amazingly well to have a variety of storytelling. So obviously you've got Marv's storyline, you've got the yellow bastard, you've got the kind of like pimps and prostitutes one. Admittedly, I can't remember what that was called off the top of my head. But this could be released in an episodic format in a similar way to Final Fantasy 
67 was originally done. So you could have elements of combat, you could have elements of stealth, you could even have elements of like some kind of, do you remember like the gang parts of GTA San Andreas? But effectively you could have sort of like your own army of prostitutes and you have to kind of send them in different directions and make sure that you defend your central base. Just trust me, there's a lot of ideas that could come from this. Number six, we've got DMZ. I do feel like Tom Clancy's The Division did actually kind of borrow a lot from DMZ, but I just think it'd be so cool if we had a game where you're in a New York, so everything's familiar, but it's kind of completely closed off. You've got all these different warring factions. To go back to one of my favorite games, it could be similar to GTA San Andreas, that you've got the color coordinated map, so there's areas that you can go, and maybe you've got to get more turf and stuff like that. It could very much also be a survival game, you know, drop yourself in that DMZ of New York, and just you have to find your way, you have to find food, you have to find water, and it could be in a similar way to Fallout New Vegas in that survival mode. I'd actually like it if this game did have permadeath, so that if you die, if you haven't found a way to save it, you know, with you being a journalist, you could have it that you've got to like write a certain passage of your story, or you've got to take a certain picture, and that's sort of your save point. And if you haven't done one of them in a while, you have to go to the last point that you did it. And as well, DMZ is a story where big decisions take place for the main character. There was one in particular about halfway through that I'm not going to spoil, but it could give you that choice, so it could be similar to what they're saying about Dying Light 2, that the choices you make could directly affect the DMZ that you're living in. You could even have it so that you've got some kind of fortress building at some point, because I know that absolutely no one loved that in Fallout 4. But given the success of The Division, and I know that DMZ isn't one of those titles that always gets talked about, but finding a way to jam those two concepts together would be a definite way to get my money. Fifthly, I'm going to cheat here because they're pretty much the same character, it's Nightwing or Daredevil. Okay, don't get too angry at me. You can see I've got a ton of Daredevil books. I've always talked about Nightwing. I love these two characters, and that's why when I was making this list, I couldn't really decide which one deserved to go higher than the other. Because as much as we all love them, you've got to admit that there's a lot of similarities in the way that they fight and the way that they play. Although with Daredevil, I do think it'd be amazing if they did some kind of listen mode so that everything works in the same way as the Mark Wade run, so that everything's just words and you have to try and find your way to fight your way through that game. But as well, everybody's talking about the next Arkham game and what's going to come next for Batman, but why not instead do something from the Bat family? We've already played as Nightwing, and I think that we didn't really get to play him at his full potential. He was my favourite character in Injustice, because admittedly I was one of those people that everybody hated, and I'd just spam, you know, when he's got like his full stick and he just poked someone in the knee to death. Yeah, unfortunately I was one of those guys. But going back to Daredevil, he's also a character that's now got quite a good public profile. You could sort of have a hybrid between a grapple hook and a Spider-Man web in the way that he's got his belly club. And similarly, Nightwing Wing could do the same. But if you were to twist my arm, it's a decision between would I rather play in Bloodhaven or would I rather play in Hell's Kitchen? And I think because of the creative liberties that they can do, I'd rather have it in Bloodhaven. But if Daredevil could find a way to incorporate the Defenders and Iron Fist and Luke Cage and Moon Knight and White Tiger and Shang-Chi, then I'd probably lean towards that way. But either way, I would buy both of these games even if they were identical copies of one another. And I was disappointed that Nightwing isn't a playable character in Injustice 2. I don't want to have to spend four years grinding to upgrade Rob to eventually be the character that I should have been anyway. Now, I should have said this before, but my top five are interchangeable. There's no game that I want more than the others, and that's going to be abundantly evident now with my number four pick. If a game developer is listening to this by some chance, and there's one game that I ask you to take, please do a video game of Conan the Barbarian. We've had them before, but now would be the perfect time to do it. I've got the perfect concept. So, okay, first mission, the opening cutscene, you are King Conan. You're on the throne. You can even have a skin in it where you play as old Arnold Schwarzenegger. And you are thrown out of your kingdom. You are thrown to the absolute bottom of the aisle. They try to put you on a ship in a reference to Conan the Buccaneer. And the first mission would be that. It's you trying to break out of this ship. It's you learning that Conan's now in a weakened state. It's the tutorial. But you somehow how I end up sinking this ship and managing to like float back to shore. This would be where the main characteristic of this game comes into play. There is no regenerating health. Conan is brutal. Conan is savage. He's a barbarian. It's in his name. Conan fights to the death. He doesn't care if he's bleeding out. He doesn't care if he's just an arm. He is going to hit you with that arm. So in fights, there is not a moment to regenerate your health. That red screen just comes in and it keeps cropping in and you've got to find a way to take down your enemy. I would make sure that this lends into some of the most intense battles that you have in video games. Because your opponent would have the same characteristic. They aren't going to heal. If you can just 
walk through someone, they aren't going to come back up. But in the same way, if you can't get past them, you can use your skills as a fighter. You can chip away and retreat. So it kind of, in a similar way, have a lot of mechanics that work in fighting games. You'd have an array of weapons, but some of them might break in combat. But you would know the entire time that as your red haze is creeping up, you might see your opponent slowing down. So it might take more effort for your Conan to swing his sword, but you know that it might be the killing blow. Or it might be the absolute last desperate attempt of your Conan before he actually dies. And it'd be similar to the most recent God of War, but it would be open world. I'd have it so that whilst you're on this island, you can always see your old kingdom up in the sky. You can see the gold of the old Conan throne, and if you feel confident enough, if you're one of those players who think you can do this, or if you're a speedrunner, they'd get a massive kick out of this, you could theoretically just run up to the kingdom and try and reclaim it for yourself, and that would be the game over. But as you get closer, you encounter more enemies, you encounter more difficult enemies, so it lends itself to exploring the world a lot better. Because if you explore the world, you'd have all these references to old Conan stories, so you'd bump into Red Sonja, there might even be references to Cole. You could see the shine of Krom. You could even have it so that some of the mythical elements come into it, but you could end up finding a way to resurrect the corpse of Emperor Thrall. I don't know, I've got tons of ideas for this game, but I'd be so excited if they did this, and I wish they'd just take my idea. I don't even want any money. Actually, scratch that, I'd want some money. But I'd just be happy to have this game. The Conan hype is real right now. We in the comics community know it. These omnibuses aren't showing any signs of stopping, so why not capitalise on that with an amazing game? Number three, and I'm cheating again, but it's on the off chance that somebody watching this, one of the three viewers, happens to work in the video game industry. I want you to make a Terminator game. And I want you to make a Terminator 1 game. I would have it so that, again, similar to what I mentioned in Saga, I'd have this as cat and mouse, but I would make this in the vein of Dead by Daylight, but in a much more expansive way. So it wouldn't always have to be online, you wouldn't always have to have somebody, but there'd be that online element where you can play the Terminator or you can play Kyle Reese or Sarah Connor. If you play as Kyle Reese or Sarah Connor, your game is all about survival. It'd very much be in the similar fashion to Alien Isolation, and you would know that this Terminator, even though you're in an open world, is always hunting you down. So you can't just hide out in one hotel and hope that that would get you by because the Terminator will always be tracking you. You have to go out for food, you have to go out for supplies, and you eventually have to get enough ammunition to be able to take on this Terminator. You can get flares, you can get fireworks as a way to distract him if the Terminator ever gets to you, but you would need to find a way to evade that situation. You can't take on this Terminator in hand-to-hand -hand combat. I'd have to cheat the lore a little bit and there'd be something like you've already got an artifact that you'd have to destroy as a way to get rid of the Terminator invasion. But to me, and I've said this before on Instagram, but the T-800 is the scariest villain that I've ever seen. Mainly because I saw it when I was about five and it traumatised me. But could you imagine that kind of unsettling feeling that there's this robot that's always going to hunt you? So in the online component, the person who's playing Kyle Reese would have to find Sarah Connor so that they could give them the location to destroy the Terminator artifact that you've got. And Sarah as well can't unlock any kind of weapons or defence until Kyle Reese meets it. But at the same time, the Terminator's got to kill both Kyle Reese, but primarily he's got to kill Sarah Connor. The Terminator's got to get out of jail free card where he can just kill Sarah Connor and then he could effectively win the game. Of course it'd be the Techno World Club and the Sarah could run there, the Terminator could run there and Kyle could run there and you could have some kind of battle similar to what we've seen in the film. Which by the way is my favourite movie scene of all time. If genuinely anybody wants me to make like a three hour long video of me just talking about how great the Techno War scene is, leave it in the comments and I will gladly do it. But of course the Techno War would be the most likely place that you'd go so you'd have to try and work out your enemy. There'd also be the police station so that if Sarah gets arrested or if Kyle gets arrested, the Terminator knows that you're there so you'd have to break out whilst you're in prison. The Terminator sort of auto-alerted to any kind of police radios and stuff like that that might be able to find you. Why is this not a game already? I'm getting so excited just talking about it and I don't even know if it'd be possible. But you'd have the most perfect 80s setting, you'd have the most perfect characters and it'd be so rich in detail. I know you probably just want me to get on to the next one but to take a leaf out of the book of the most recent Call of Duty, if Kyle gets injured before he reaches Sarah, you could have it so that he's in a future nightmare similar to the Gulag and you've got to take down a Terminator with just one laser gun. And if you do it, then another Kyle is sent back in time, but that's the only chance that you'll get. Shit, I've got so many good ideas for this. Video game companies, please just hire me and I will make this game for you. Now at number two, I've got Fear Agent. Fear Agent's one of those series that's just built in popularity since it's ended. There was originally a PC game for this that I never got to play because unfortunately I'm on a Mac. And no, I'm not just boasting or anything there. But Fear Agent is another one of those games where the universe just feels so rich. Again, I get the feeling like if they did ever make a Fear Agent game, it would unfortunately fall into being a point and click adventure. But could you 
imagine if it's a system that you are an exterminator and you just keep getting calls, you've got rush to this planet, you've got to find a way to exterminate everything, and each world's very different. It'd be in a similar way to Ratchet and Clank and the way that the weapons work there. You'd have all these creative devices at your disposal. You'd be able to upgrade your ship, you'd be able to upgrade your armor. There'd be so much that would go into this. And as well, of course, you've got the fact that he's an alcoholic, so I'd find a way to incorporate that into it. And I'd do it in a similar way that you could become dependent on drugs in Fallout. I don't know, I haven't read Fear Agent in years, it'd probably worth going back and giving it a reread, but just remember thinking that it'd be so good just to play in this world. Now, a few honorable mentions. Some kind of Green Arrow game. I feel like this could work in a similar way that the Arkham games work. Yeah, there might be a lot of similarities there, but I just think it'd be cool. A Teen Titans game. You could have it so that you've got five characters and you have to fight your way through in a similar way to Marvel Ultimate Alliance. An Iron Man game where you can fully upgrade the Iron Man costume for the way that you want to play. But my number one pick, and it probably is more than any other, even that great Conan game and even that great Terminator game, is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. And the reason why this is so high on the list is because we've been rumoured to be getting one for years and years and nothing's come about it. Originally it was said that it was going to be by Rocksteady Studios, the people who did Batman Arkham, but what's come from it? Nothing. And it's really disappointing because could you imagine how great this would be if you could seamlessly switch between the four Turtles? And each one has a different thing that they can do, so Raphael of course would be the angry one so that if you don't want to do any stealth you could just charge right through. Michelangelo could utilise disguises and stuff like that. Donatello would be the tech guy so he could close down like camera systems. And Leonardo could be like pure stealth and stuff like that and then you could have them all come together for combat. Could you imagine how great this would be if you have to like balance your time between being in the sewers and being on the ground? Oh, it'd be so cool and if like the Foot Clan was always there you could go into Dimension X, you've got Krang, you've got Casey Jones, you've got April O'Neil. Pizza of course would be the way that you'd get more health. There's just so much that I think they could do with a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game that it just baffles me that they haven't already decided to do it yet. This is the one game that I'm talking about it and I'm actually getting disappointed that it's not already here because I thought it would have been by now. So I'm not going to say too much more on this one but Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is definitely my number one pick. But that's my list of games that I'd like to see based on comics. Let me know what you think should get its own video game in the comment section below. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video why did you get this far? Please subscribe if you haven't already and click that bell notification it really helps the channel out. Check out some of my other videos here but keep safe, keep reading and keep barking all you mad dogs.